all that. It's a Saturday morning. All right, guys, here we are back on Top Secret Lake S. Getting ready to do some fall fishing. It's one of my favorite winter lakes. We are going to check and see if there's any uh, Domeki rig fish available. Checking spot number one. Very first thing this morning. It's supposed to be a little breezy today, so audio may not be great, which means we might be able to fish some moving baits today. That'd be fun. So this again is a predominantly smallmouth lake. Uh, again, I don't know what the water temps are. I'll give you the rundown of the conditions a little bit later. We're gonna be doing a lot of different things today trying to locate this fi these fish. It's been a long time since the spring since I've been out on this lake. Let's go see what we can find. And we're just gonna try and cover some water here. Something you always want to look for too. Ah, right across that log. See that log right there? This water's pretty clear. I'm in eight feet and I can see the bottom, eight to ten feet. Yep, right across it right there. Oh now come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Really? Whew. Golly, hung up first thing today. How's that for? up on the first daggone cast. Bad thing is I can see it. I'm telling you guys, these right here are worth their weight in gold. And right there's why. See that? It's that easy. You ain't gonna find these at Bass Pro. You don't have to go to your local tackle shop. So let me give you a rundown of the conditions real quick. It is 36 degree this morning, only supposed to be warming up to the low 50s, if not only right at 50 degrees. The water temp is 63 degree and the water clarity, depending on where you're at, for the most part, it's about 10 to 15 feet. So guys, what we're gonna do is I've got one or two spots really close to the boat ramp where I can find out if the Domeki bite is really on. So I'm not gonna waste a lot of time searching for those Domeki fish. Now I'm gonna be working my way toward the lower end of the lake. So I'll hit a couple of good Domeki spots just to see if they're there, just to see if we can get them to bite really quickly. But for the most part, we're gonna be focusing on those mid depths and shallow ranges. Now the areas we're gonna actually focus on, we're gonna start out checking a couple of main lake bluffs and points. But the big key is I'm gonna to need to see some sort of bait fish action on those places. Remember, we're in the fall. This is mid fall to late fall right now. And here's the deal. It is all about the bait fish. So on the main lake, we're gonna stop on a couple of windblown bluffs and a couple of windblown points. That's what we're gonna focus on on the main lake. If they're not there, we're gonna move into the creeks. one Pe textbook windblown point guys you can see it blowing in right here whopper plopper what i always say 
when the wind's blowing, put the spook down, pick the plopper up. What do you think about it? Cruising is shallow. All right, guys, we're gonna drop on some right here. Might need to put a white one on, something a little brighter color, but we're gonna use, we're gonna start out with my favorite color right there. That is smoke black silver. That's what I caught and really, really had my best days on. But uh, there's definitely fish here. And it seems like there's more of them than there was last time. If we can get one out of the deal, I'll be happy. If we can get three out of the deal, I'll be real happy. If we can get a giant, I'll be even happier. Yeah, we're coming up on it now. Easing on up. Well, look at those fish piled up down there. I don't know if you can see them, but they are right there. I got one, I got a little bit of a late start, but yeah, you never yeah, scared the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, about, I about jumped in the bottom of the boat. fella well there's <laughs> fish number two if you can call him that little guy on a bluff wall windblown bluff wall I caught him on a bass munitions recon shad down this bluff <laughs> Right now, being the middle of fall, I'm gonna guess these fish are two thirds to all the way in the back of major creek arms. Now one thing that I really like when I'm looking for shad that's grouped up is the back of that creek needs to widen out just a little bit and it needs to have active water. So there needs to actually be a feeder creek running in to that main creek arm. Those are two things that I really focus on in the fall. Finally got one. Get in. Oh. right in my seat, really? On a jerk bait. 
We're over 37 foot deep off this point. It's a windblown point. And, you know, it is what it is. He come up and hit it. Let's see if we can catch another off this. There's a bunch of them down there. Once that feels like it might be a better one. Stay down. Eh, not really. Well, there's number three. And he come on a jerk bait. Guys, we just can't seem to get the size that we want right now. spot and here pretty little spot but uh, yeah my day has been plagued with dinks so I have a little bit of audio trouble from here on out so I'll just have to kind of narrate and tell you what's going on so while in the back of this creek some shad come up and started flipping on the surface you could tell they were being chased but the bass weren't breaking the surface and this is a big key guys be sure before you whip out a top water and start throwing it and wonder why they're not biting be sure that you're seeing bass break the surface if the bass themselves aren't breaking the surface they're just pushing the shad up to the surface then go sub surface because the bass themselves aren't coming up to the top of the water so i come back out to this point which is right before you get to the back of this creek. Again, we're fishing the last two thirds of this major creek arm, which also has active water. There's a, there's a very fast flowing creek in the back of this creek arm. We back off, we start throwing our jerk bait again, and we hook up with another. The best fish of the day was the last fish of the day. This fish weighed in almost three pounds, 2.93 pounds on the new Connect Scale 2. So just remember if you're going to a lake that you've never been to, or maybe you haven't been to in a while, and it's mid fall, look for the bait fish. That's gonna get you started catching fish. And from there, you can figure out how to catch the bigger ones as the day goes on. So as always guys, questions and comments in the comment section below. You know I love to talk about fishing with you all. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Be sure you ring that bell to get the notifications when these videos come out so you can watch them. And you guys rock. All right guys, let's pick a winner for the 15,000 subscriber giveaway. So we've already got the URL copied in. So we've got 145 unique comments and we will pick the winner now. All right. <laughs> The winner is B.A. Fishing. That's pretty awesome. Uh, B.A., you've won. Uh, make sure you get in contact with me, brother, and uh, I'll send that stuff out to you.
congratulations, man. Now, as for the stickers, guys, I will put a, I will pin a comment that will have the entire list of the 29 sticker winners. I'm not going to sit here and lengthen this video <laughs> naming every single one of you. So, uh, and don't worry, there'll be more stickers to come. Just make sure uh, you shoot me an email. The email will also be in the comment that I pinned from Bass Geek. And uh, you can shoot me an email and get me your information and I'll mail them out to you. Thanks guys, I appreciate everything you, you all do for me. You guys rock.